Hey, what's up? And welcome to Bougie Banter. I'm your girl, Nisha B., my sister, Tasha Too Funny, and my mom, Dr. Fletcher. All right, so we have a couple topics on this episode that we want to cover. But first, we have to do a shout-out for our wine by One Hope. Today, we are drinking on some Chardonnay 2020 California. This is by One Hope Wine. The link is in our bio or in the description if you're watching on YouTube. Be sure to check it out. We'll be right back. Okay, so why do pick Misha's keep raising dust? And if you have not heard, if you've not heard about the term pick Misha, y'all know Share Seven. If you ain't watching her, let's be real, you probably are. Uh, and pick Misha is a woman who just does the most to be chosen by a guy, proving she is worthy, showing she is fit and worthy of a guy's attention, love, or whatever. And a Dusty is a guy who ain't got no money and always want to be barking about some stuff, demanding some things, and he can't even afford it anyway. So that's a Dusty. That's Pick Misha. And why are so many being raised? Go so, ahead, Dr. Fletcher. Oh, hold, hold on. Clarify. So you're saying the Pick Misha is the mama? No, the Pick Misha is just a woman in general. Oh, I'm saying, but, but she's you said raising she's raising a Dusty. dusty. Yeah. Okay, you call so, him a Dusty. So it's her. Is this is her child, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So why does a woman? Okay, I'm gonna tell you. I think that, um, and I'm trying to figure out what generation started that we, that this we went mess. wrong. You yeah, I'm what? trying to figure out what generation kicked it off. Uh, the girl was saying it was in the 90s. Yeah, in the 90s is when they started talking about, oh, uh, we're sipping on gin and juice, chilling, laid back, chilling. Well, I, I know. Me, I kick have off heard. your shoes and relax your feet. Her. Take me on a date. I need something to eat. I want to cater <laughs> to you. This is your day. Okay, but wait a minute. All right, I remember um, women, there was a time where it was men wasn't in the house because they had that, uh, the welfare. It, was like, it was a lot of men going into jail. They was doing, um, well, they was like a, a mass incarceration. That's what it was. So women were single, and they had to hold it down. Okay, so then they um, kind of was raising, they were, had to be both the man and the, and the woman, so they had to, lean more into their masculine um, personality in order to survive. And their sons, some of the sons back then, because I remember my dad um, having to do work, like, you know, take up the slack. But somewhere along the line, some women, because they were a single parent, they was like looking at other women, and if she wasn't working as hard as them, then how they had no choice but to do that, Oh, that woman's wrong, and my son is not going to be sitting up here taking care of her or, or catering to her because I had to work hard. Right. If no one catered to me, so why should why should he cater to you? And that's right. the problem. Each generation supposed to get better. Just because you struggle, don't mean I'm supposed to join you in the struggle. Sis, sorry, that was for you, not for me. In, in reality, it's one thing if you have to do this, but why would I want my son? Now, I don't want my son, my child, to be with somebody who's not going to actually genuinely love them. Right. And appreciate them. and appreciate yeah, them. I don't right. want I don't want my child mistreated by anybody or to be used. But what happened to what the role of the mother and the role of the father? I mean, and, and, and well, I, I do know and I do appreciate that each couple determines their role. But to think that yo you it's okay to raise a a boy who remains a boy is a problem that he never. Well, the thing is, up. but she never had that experience. So if I have never experienced being treated well, to see my husband doing it for somebody else makes me jealous and a little angry. And it's like, wait a minute, she's using you. Why are you doing all that for her? Because I've always broken my back. Why is it being handed to her? You weren't raised to see that. So where do you get it from? I don't get it, period. I don't get it no way around. Why wouldn't you want to raise your son to be a, a strong man that provides and to, and to provide and to take care of his woman you should brag on your son and how well he takes care of his family but you mm -hmm. can't brag if you're jealous i didn't get that experience oh, i struggled yeah. the entire time so no i don't want that for her i right. want it for me that's right. why a lot of times they be saying like these women be acting like they're dating their son that's not your man baby he's right. my man now like let it go let him grow mm -hmm. and i personally 
I I wouldn't want a mother's uh, mama's boy. I wouldn't want it. I, I ain't got time to be competing. All right, we'll be right back. And we're back. So there's a post training right now with Kiki Palmer and her baby daddy. And, you know, it's a whole thing. He was complaining about her outfit that she wore because she went to the Usher concert in Vegas. And he had an issue with what she was wearing. It was a sheer dress that has like a bodysuit with it. But the bodysuit happened to have like a thong in the back. And yes, her booty was a little bit out. But it was a sheer dress either way. It's a concert. You're sitting down the whole time. She looked good. I ain't complaining. But anyway, that's his issue. He's been complaining about it. But then, like, that was the first kind of tweet there. Everybody was kind of like, ah. And he put that on Twitter. And then he decided to go back and add more. His other post was kind of just like, you know, you're a mother now. Da, da 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 You shouldn't be carrying yourself like that. Blah, blah, blah. So a lot of the controversial comments and all the commentary really is, you know, is he in the right space to even have that complaint? Some guys are like, yeah. Some women are like, yeah. Pick me, should be yours. <laughs> and then the other ones, you know, are like, you know, no, you can't tell her what to do. So, I'll give my opinion first. Um, boy, bye. First of all, I feel like he, okay. So, if I feel like if he really wants to be in control of her or have any opinion that was actually valid or mattered, then he would have married her so that they can have a conversation. You're not my husband. You can't tell me what to do. You're not my daddy, baby. You're not even my husband. Like, you, your opinion is not valid. I get it. You feel some type of way, but if you really felt some type of way and you wanted some genuine say, you would have married me, not just made me a mom. And another thing I feel like with men who have, on a post I had put up, I tweet, I put up a tweet myself, and it was just like um, um, when men don't have anything, they want to have something to kind of hold over you to knock you down a few pegs to make them feel a little bit better than you or to mm-hmm. feel accessible to them. So I felt like even with him, getting the fact that you would make this woman that we all respect a mother and not a wife is just in my opinion a little bit intentional and just showed me his dusty (laughs) that just made me more like you really are dusty and then and then have the attitude switch your lips like you her man like you're not even paying the bills baby like this other tweet said you sitting on her wi-fi or in her house with her paying a bill and you got the nerve to tweet on her twitter (laughs) like what is your problem please stay in your lane brokey Mm. so yeah it's it's a no for me as well. Uh, my thing is this. They are dating. They're not married. So this is still a trial period. And if he doesn't like what she's wearing, move on with your life, sir. Oh, you're not going to do that. Me, personally, I think he's trying to, you know, ride her, her tail because Kiki Palmer been in her bag lately. I mean, she looks good. She mm. just had a baby. Skin is glowing. Body is popping. She got the hips. I wish I was. I thought I was gonna get when I had two kids. I didn't get them. It's all right. But mm. she's she's doing her thing. She mm. looks good. She's looking. She's you know. So I think he's just kind of being a hater a little bit, and that's best he could come up with. You're a mom now. That right there was disrespectful to me. What that mean? You're a mom now. Mm-hmm. Her kids wasn't there. Mm-hmm. So. And you know she probably don't even get much time to do fun stuff. That's be manipulative. Working. That's controlling. Yeah. yeah. And, and, then, and who are you? You are nobody, sir. Yeah. You Kiki Palmer, baby daddy. That's your name. Kiki Palmer, baby daddy. First name, last. I'll stay in your lane. This girl was saying that he was very vindictive and he was just doing it on purpose. Try to, because he felt embarrassed and insecure. So he wants to embarrass her. And he should have went a different route. He should have been like, yeah, girl, you look good. But the problem is he know Usher. Got long money. Usher is that guy. And so he felt threatened uh-huh. because he knows for anybody else, it had been a girl on stage, a random girl in the crowd, and they'd have been dancing and whatever the case is. But he know Usher could ask her for her number and it could go be history from there. It could be. So that's why he felt some type of way. But she tweeted afterwards and she was basically a fan of Usher saying, wow, the show was phenomenal. I had a great time. You know, should have took more pictures, that type of thing. All right, Dr. Fletcher. I think that him saying anything on social media, number one, was dead wrong. 
um, any opinion. Not that um, he privately he could have said something to her. Um, she, I wouldn't in her place. I would have dismissed anything he said because, uh, as two adult people, I think I can pick my wardrobe out as to what I would like to wear, and. I would see through his insecurity and I would have to make that decision. Do I care? You see what I'm saying? So, and, and that's where if he would have kept it private, if he'd have kept it between the two of them, then they could have determined because honestly, I probably would have still wore it. <laughs> and, 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 and that, and that really does, but that also goes to show because to say that they've been this in, long into a relationship and she doesn't have an inkling of how he feels about certain things. The thing about it is she said she knows who he is and she does not care. She and, and he went to the public with it because she he knows in private she don't care. So he tried to get everyone else on board yeah. to support him uh, right. in his in his opinion and in his feeling and see look, see, you know, no. Nope, you got dragged. Yeah, it definitely went left. It went way he then, wasn't, he wasn't expecting that. Then they brought up receipts from back in the day mm -hmm. from tweets that he's tweeted back in back before when he had made some comments about Alton Sterling when, you know, Alton Sterling, who was fatally killed by the police um, and an unarmed, another unarmed black man, but saying, oh, if he would have complied and so on and so forth, really being real other, real other on on that post. So uh -huh. now, you know, he really. Yeah, he he, he digging himself a hole. He dug. A, yeah. So and it, he should have just stayed in the background. Keep your mouth shut. And, and that way you won't even be nobody would say anything about you. That's Kiki Palmer, dad, baby daddy. And don't let nobody else know. But you was trying to get some light. Yeah, I feel like you got Kiki Palmer, baby. Like this is way above your at least shouldn't even she don't even see her full worth yet. The world is starting to show it. And I think that's why she's he's getting worried because like, wait a minute. I caught her at her weakest when she didn't know she was worthy of more. And if she finds out. She might leave me for somebody who's worthy of yep, me. Yep, exactly. And it's like, yep. uh oh, what can I do to knock her down and make sure she's insecure? Mm -hmm. Baby, it's too late. She in Vegas with Usher. <laughs> and, and you know it's what? It's too and, late. And honestly, I do believe that even though she started as a child, I still believe that she has not seen where she's going. Her full potential, yeah. She hasn't seen yeah. it. For some reason, when I look at her, I think that there is so much more coming from this girl. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She's just getting started, baby. Yep. And you finna miss out. Because you're dumb. Yep. Yes. Like, yep. she blocked herself off for all these years or however long they've been together to be with you and she being loyal to you and stuff and you want to be dumb on her internet? That's called fumbling the bag. Right. You fumbled the bag, young Because you might have got a good check. And but now you might not get nothing. When you when she was pregnant, I'd have rushed her to the altar. Heck. Baby, I, we, need, we need to be married, he, baby. The thing is, because she might not have been in her feminine to know that she's worthy of more, she was accepting less, and he's like, well, I am better than her, and she's unworthy of my name. Because now they don't even look at carrying your child, your offspring, as a thing anymore. Now it's, oh, my name means more. Sir, don't nobody want your dusty last name. It means nothing. Please get out of my face. You unworthy of the offspring I could even give you. You lucky you could even sniff her air. But you unworthy. And it's just like, you know what? That's on you. And now you get embarrassed on the internet and go ahead and delete your account. We're going to find you. They find you. It's Twitter. And you got TikTok. You know they're going to find you. But now you get your mama to fame. Hope it's worth it. All right. We'll be right back. It's in God's hands now. All right, so uh, Jill Scott put out a different rendition of the Star Spangled Banner. And as you know, um, we're celebrating a lot of places are, uh, or this year celebrated Juneteenth. And of course, July 4th, a lot of people were questioning if uh, that should be something we even celebrate at all as African-American people. So um, basically, what did you think of, because we watched the video, if you haven't, I have it linked below in the comments. Um, but what did you think of the Star Spangled Banner rendition? banner rendition that Joe Scott did, Dr. Fletcher. Honestly, when when I first started listening, I I thought, is she drunk? What what what's happening? Because 
there was such pain in her voice. And I was like, what, what's going on? And as I listened to her, oh, my God, it brought chills, literally chills to me. I wanted to cry. I understood. I felt it. I felt it. And she sang it. Just the pain in her voice was just, I thought it was unbelievable. I I thought it was unbelievable. Go ahead, Tasha. I, lo- I loved it. I loved it personally. It hurt. It, it was painful, but it was, um, and I love that she did it on the Star Spangled Banner because the Star Spangled Banner is held at such a high, you know, and to really throw blood on the flag. That's what it was to mm-hmm. me. As soon as she said, uh, like on the first the first couple of lines, and you could say, but this is not, as soon as she said that first but, my skin, my hair started standing up because I knew where this was going. And when I think about, we were talking about yesterday, when I think about 400 years of slavery and how good you get at something after 400 years, I mean, they probably had them folks packed up in the ship so fast and, I mean, productivity was at an all-time high. When you do the same job that your father's father's father did, I mean, you, you didn't got it down to a science. So they uh-huh. knew how to break these people down. And then when she said, um, is your, what did she say? The last part? No. And she said, um, will it even be like, will it even be remembered? Yeah. Oh, no. She well, said, uh, does it have a weight? Does, does it hold it any weight? Does it hold any weight? When she said that, I said, it, it will never hold weight to them. All they will hear is that song and say, oh, she disrespected the Star Spangled Banner. It will never hold any weight to them, but it is us. We are their descendants. It has to hold some weight to us. So it was, I thought it was right. beautiful. Yeah. Just, right. Even though the, the blood, how she talked about the sweat and their hands. Mm. The last mm-hmm. part, mm-hmm. home of the slave. She said, it's not the land of the free, but the home of, of the, the slave. slave. And wow. That, that ain't hit. Wow. So if you have not had a chance to watch it, like I said, it's linked below. Um, it's definitely worth giving it a listen. And yeah. a share. Yeah. Share it. Share it. And, yes. and and for me, Jill Scott was the perfect person to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because she understands that soul. It was like, it was really history. The way it sounded very old. Um, Mahalia Jackson, slave, mm-hmm. freedom. It, yeah. It, I mean, you felt it. You felt it, and she understood what she was saying and how powerful and what it really meant. So I thought she was perfect. It could have been a play. Yeah. A musical. I mean, honestly, that I think that was her acting skills yeah, that came out. Because <laughs> like, when, we, when you first heard it, like, is she drunk? But she was weary. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She was weary. And you know how um, the songs they had back in the day, uh, oh, the hymns and all that stuff, mm-hmm. when they were out there? Mm-hmm. That's what it reminded me of. Even one of it, those. it was one of the part where she sang, and it sounded like old time gospel. Mm-hmm. Wow, that girl's the bomb. Yeah. Wow. And in this this heat, it's been what? Um, as they said it felt like a hundred and six degrees. I wish I don't understand how it's ninety one degrees outside, but it feel like a hundred and six. No, if it feel like a hundred and six, it's a hundred and six. <laughs> but all I could think was like, wow, I cannot because we here in Georgia, right? I cannot believe my ancestors worked. Pregnant, mm-hmm. tired, hungry. You lost me at work. I ain't trying to do that. So, and I do it for my ancestors. I'm not working. Thank you. Amen. We'll be right back. All right, and we're back. And today we're going to talk about, for our last segment, um, it's narrow, and it's called What Really Works My Nerves. And it's just talking about different pet peeves and things that we've been seeing that's kind of annoying and what works my nerves. Uh, so this week we want to talk about people who always give out unwanted advice about things that they have no knowledge of. All right, Tasha, you first. Okay, so just to clarify what uh, this unsolicited advice when you have no, it's like, for instance, me personally, y'all can do what y'all want. Me personally, I'm not taking fitness advice from somebody who I find 
to be Facts. unfit. <laughs> or I'm not taking, uh, oh, this is how you grow your hair out. Well, let me see your hair. This is how you get sick. Especially these financial, these Instagram, Twitter, financial coaches. This is how you make six figures. Do you have six? Fi- no, I'm about to get it, though. Okay, well, write the book when you finish. <laughs> Marriage advice when you're not married. Parenting advice. You ain't never been a parent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I cannot take advice for somebody. And then on top of that, I can't take advice from somebody if I don't look at you and say, wow, that's, that's admirable. Like, goals. yeah, that's goals. Then I can't take advice from you. Well, you need to do it like this. Baby, you look like the struggle bus. <laughs> I'm not listening to nothing you say because clearly, clearly it's not working. No, I cannot stand. I've had people that always want to give out business advice. But I have yet to see a business that has actually succeeded. That's Only right. thing you can ever tell me is what not to do. But they can't tell you what to do. That is so annoying. And I will have people, because I'm an entrepreneur, I constantly have people that want to give me advice. And I'm going to tell you something. I also cannot stand people that use God to mm. say this is why. Well, God told me to tell you. And I'll be thinking... I just spoke to him this morning. Why he didn't tell me? Right. Shouldn't it be a confirmation? Right. Why is it that God just skipped over me and he go to you to tell me what? When he could just speak directly. That is so annoying. It's like, no, he didn't tell you. You know it's you. And what annoys me is broke men. All right. So that is it for this episode of Bougie Banner. Join us right here next week on the couch. Bye.